The wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Welcome again to this hour of sharing from God's Word. I trust that you have had a wonderful time in fellowshipping with your fellow believers in this hour of the Sabbath. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before we farewell one another, one more time from God's word, I invite you to please close your eyes and we will pray. Our merciful Father, we thank you for the blessing that you have blessed us with through the hour of your Sabbath. And Lord, we look forward to this time and to share again from the blessing of your word. And we invite the leading of your Holy Spirit and may your will be done in our lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I wish to share with us the beautiful picture of the everlasting gospel. I wonder how you might have seen the picture of the gospel but I wish to share with you my view of this beautiful picture of the gospel. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 6, we are told of an everlasting gospel that needed to be preached to the whole world. And it reads in the New King James Version, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Now, this is the last sign that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 that were to take place before the end comes. We read in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. The gospel, or oh, the everlasting gospel, my friend, is Jesus. In John chapter 3, Jesus had an unusual visitor on an unusual time of a day. It was an unusual manner of visit as well. It challenges us that however, whenever, or whatever approach you wish to take towards Jesus, He is ever ready to meet your need. Nicodemus was a member of a very respectable class in a Jewish community and he represented his group to approach Jesus of their inmost query of the kingdom of God. It was through this conversation that was uttered the simplicity, the beauty, the satisfying picture of the gospel. You might be jumping ahead and think that I'm referring to verse 16. No! The power of verse 16 is portrayed in verses 14 and 15. And it reads in John chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 in the New King James Version. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, my friend, what do we do when we read a verse that, that um, a verse as this that is taken from, from Old Testament stories? What we need to do is pause and visit that story. Now, that verses or those verses um, that, that was quoted, that was um, uh, stated by Jesus were alluded to numbers chapter 21 verses 4 through to verse 8. Mind you, Nicodemus knows the story by heart. And here, Jesus is using this opportunity to remind Nicodemus of a very important story that he should have known. 
Let me read from verse 4 through to verse 8 in Numbers chapter 21. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged and on the way. And, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Let's just pause there for a moment. Wow, worthless bread. And the bread was to symbolize Jesus, the living bread, and the, the word of God. Is that something that is happening in this world today? The world has despised Jesus and suppressed on his written word. Let's continue reading from verse 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Friends and family, as God sent out a fiery serpent among the Israelites, then so God has allowed the destructiveness of sin in the world today. Let me ask this question. To who was the bronze serpent useful to? To those who have been bitten or to those who were not been bitten? We refer to the story in verse 8. It reads that to everyone who has been bitten, when they see it, they will live. Jesus told Nicodemus that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus is useful for those who has been bitten by the destructiveness of sin and wants to live. It does not matter how you look at yourself. The scripture says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All humanity have sinned, but all humanity have been offered life through the lifted Son of Man. Jesus Christ. Look to Him, family, because God loves you. He gave His Son for you. This world is coming to an end, and He wants you to live. The only way is through accepting the promise, accepting the gift, accepting the deliverance of God through Jesus Christ. That is God's gospel for us through this week. You might come into a collision with temptation in this new week. Please remember Jesus. Look to Jesus, who is not ashamed to be seen with sinners. Like you and me, he can and able to deliver you. And that is the good news for us this week. Amen. Let us pray. Our merciful Father, we submit our lives into your hand as we step into this new week. We believe and hope, have confidence that your prayer will surely prevail in our lives. As you prayed in John chapter 17, verse 15, Lord, I pray that you not take them out of this world, but deliver them from the evil one. May your will be done in our lives, Lord, and may we experience the everlasting gospel and share it with whoever we come in contact with. Thank you for listening and thank you for your answer to our prayers. This we pray in Jesus' name.